Hello, listener and viewer. I want to thank God for you and for you finding time to be with us every week. And we want to continue to bring hope into your life and to challenge you on how you can live a godly life and have a good relationship with God. Today, as we talk about this season that we are in, we are just about the time when we have done elections and uh, things that are happening around us sometimes bring fear, uh, a lot of uncertainty, and uh, sometimes we find ourselves at the place of loss. And I want to encourage you with a message on how you can be resilient in times such as this. If you read in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and from verse 1 to 3, the Bible says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that so hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who by the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And then verse 3 says, Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary or lose heart. I like that. So that you will not grow weary or lose heart. If we try to bring down this word resilience, you know, just breaking it down. Basically, resilience is that uh, ability to withstand shock without permanent deformation or rupture. It's a simple definition. During this time, there are those of us probably who were not able to be elected, or maybe for some of us, there was somebody that we thought would be the one that would be elected, and somehow it, it did not go that way and as we go through this season we can easily be downcast we can easily be overtaken by the loss that we have gone through and that is why sometimes we need to be resilient to rise up again and to move on with our life uh, we can also say that resilience is the ability to persevere the challenges that we encounter in life and come out victoriously. And I want to encourage those of us who probably for one way or the other you're feeling like you failed or your person was not elected or maybe you have spent so much of your money and maybe things did not turn out the way you had hoped they would turn out. Uh, I would like us to look at the, 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 the passage that we have read and draw some encouragements that can help us to be resilient in this time that we are in. Number one, uh, we are going to see that we can be resilient because what we are going through is not a very unique situation. In verse number one, it says that therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. In other words, there are people who have gone through what we are going through. There are other countries that have gone through what we have gone through as Kenyans. And one of the things that then should make us to be resilient is that if they made it, we also can be able to make it. If they were able to reform, we also can be able to reform. If they were able to rise up from where they were, we also can be able to rise up from where we are. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10 and verse 13, it says that there is no temptation that has seized you except that one that is common to us all as men. Secondly, I want to believe that another way we can master and we can be able to be resilient is for us to get rid of anything that distracts or deters us. And for us, probably having come from an electioneering period, what the Bible is telling us here is, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. It is very possible to harbor bitterness. It is very possible to have rage and anger about people or about systems or about even what went on during this electioneering period. And the word of God is telling us, cast out that thing. 
Because if you hold it in you, it is very possible that you may continue to be at the place where you have bitterness, you have hatred, and you malign other people, or you think that uh, there are certain people who are against you. These are times that we can easily have things that can cause us to have the wrong mindset and attitude. Thirdly, as we look at this scripture, in verse 1 there again it says, and let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out before us. In other words, let us go through whatever we are going through with a lot of perseverance. I know there are things that didn't work out the way we had expected. I know that probably situations have shifted around us, even for us as a nation, probably we are going through an economical uh, crisis, uh, there's a lot of joblessness, we have a lot of uncertainty, who will do what for us as a nation. And as we go through these challenges, one of the things that the Word of God is helping us to appreciate is there is the need to persevere. In other words, let us be strong in our faith, let us be hopeful that this that we are going through will pass away and God is going to give us recovery. And then fourthly, the other thing that I just want to encourage us, even as we keep ourselves resilient, is let us maintain our focus on God. In verse 2, it says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. When we put our eyes on man, when we put our eyes probably even on a party, or when we put our eyes on probably even our tribe uh, affiliation or, or probably even our, uh, our you know, financial resources or whatever else that we may feel probably is the muscle that we need to overcome our problems, that is the point at which we fail. The Bible says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus because Jesus does not fail, he does not change, he is not seasonal. He will remain there for us at whatever time and in whatever circumstances that we find ourselves in. And then fifthly and lastly, I also want us to just be encouraged to be resilient in these times that we are in because we shall overcome every challenge that we are going through. And in verse 2 there, it says again, For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. If Jesus overcame, we also we shall be able to overcome. And I just want to encourage you that it doesn't matter what you're going through during this time of the electioneering, during this time of when we have gone through uh, the elections. I don't know what has gone wrong, what has not gone right in your life, but I want you to be encouraged. Do not allow that challenge to be like a constant in your life but for you to know that you will be able to overcome that challenge as you trust in God as you hope in God and as you put your faith in him shall we pray together our Lord and Heavenly Father as we rise up from this time when we have cast our votes and those who have been elected have been elected and sometimes we may feel let down sometimes we may be cast down in our spirits because what we thought would happen did not happen. Yet, God, you are telling us today to be resilient and to remember that you are in control of everything that is happening around us. And that somehow you are God who is able to restore, who is able to recover, who is able to bring us back to the place where we can continue to move on as a nation, as a people, and so I want to pray that you may cause us not to look back, but to look at you who is the author and the perfecter of our faith. And so may you bless us as a nation and may you help us to rise up again because we ask this with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. And so my listener, my viewer, I encourage you, be resilient. You will rise up again. You will move on because that is the promise of God.